because the earthquake just shook him off and they went down well then I cannot use this this uh, this system and another difference with DXing like I was saying is that a lot of time when they all talk it's about uh, uh, getting an awards or getting points for contests so basically it's about gather, gathering information uh, reaching a very specific uh, communication point versus in self-reliance communication it's about what's happening in the next states what's happening in uh, near me is there riots uh, where is the disaster is it coming towards me is it this is so, so you're trying to get gather more information so 95 percent of the time we'll be more listening than transmitting uh, versus in contest it's all about transmitting obviously it's about receiving as well because you want to be able to attack but there's it, it comes a, a it changed a little bit the mentality and the equipment that you need if you want to gather more information than transmitting more of the of thing so then if it's mostly to listen and I don't need and I don't need a license to listen then why do I need a license a license then well uh, let me ask you the, the question this way would you rely on learning first aid by only buying a kit and reading a book um, and yeah I mean first aid oh I'll do it whenever it comes but uh, when you need it you need it right now and when you talk about radio the radio wave depends on a lot of stuff it depends on the atmosphere the ground wave the propagations and stuff the different antennas that you have and you can communicate the different radios that you can have the portables and stuff and then there's something else the modes so you can have CW which is Morse uh, digital analog HF VHF SSB so there's a lot of modes and ways of communicating out there and this is why we do our license it's not so much to uh, be able to talk and everything because a lot of people I know for the self-reliance they're like oh they bought the gear and I'll use it whenever and uh, and I'll do it and sometimes they even going to rely on um, illegal transmission if the grid would be off because oh, now the grid is down but you need practice because you need to understand the gear that you need. You need to also be able to understand all those different things because the antenna that you have set up right now, how does it work? How does, like for example, yesterday was our net, and usually the net works probably uh, all good and everything, but or the antenna and this is with a grid up. And yesterday the communication on one antenna didn't work very well so just even practicing that stuff and I'm not on the radio all the time talking chatting and everything but just even to practice once a week on the net that's uh, 30 minutes once a week I get on it communicate chat with some people and stuff and give my news and work my radio and then uh, how do I enter the communication but that's just that's just it so I don't need to talk all the time on the radio to, to, to but just by practicing this seeing if my system works if my antenna works I can try different system I could maybe go and walk and see if that will uh, get communication so it's about propagations about radios antennas understanding the different modes how could I talk to people X and Z with those things so this is why we do our license so you can give this this practice about this a bonus learning also about when I did the license that I found was I've learned electronics and uh, because part of the exam is there's a good portion of electronics I didn't know anything about capacitors and, and uh, resistors and Ohm's law and everything but yet a lot of the gear that we carry now in those days has electronic in it and for example a way that I taught myself because again I didn't know anything about it is to buy one of those kids little kits they're pretty cheap There's, depending on the ones you do you know like 50 experiments like the one I have right there could be maybe 40 bucks 50 bucks uh, you don't need to solder so they're, they're like little springs and you can put stuff and they're made for kids for 12 years old 13 years old so you don't need like a um, very high uh, degree of masters or or a bachelor degree in uh, electronics to start playing with them but then you start understanding some concept what's the resistor what how is that how what's the transformer how does that work and now uh, you see from that now i'm able to do like projects and soldering and and repair some of my kit and then when you're able to do kits 
That means that if your kit breaks down, you're able to repair it, but not only like your radio communication, but other stuff, because you understand some of the concepts. And for for you, if you have children or grandchildren, great way to introduce them as well. So you buy this, when they come and visit, you play with it, you do one kit and stuff. And so it can become a whole family kit. And now like there's, uh, I'm looking at uh, for Christmas to buy some for my, um, some of my nephews and stuff. And there's kits like, six years old eight year go, years old there's even some of them they're like uh, clips-ons uh, so they're even easier than those ones and they're for all ages and they're very uh, like they're becoming very um, advanced on what they can do uh, so I think like the bonus learning of just that passing your exam is worth to try for your your license so now you have your license uh, now we're going to talk you know we're going to buy some prime and we talk about practice here's two ways that i think is and this is how i set up my kit um so i do a lot of uh hiking and outdoors and so my kit is separated in two kits there's one that uh, when i call mobile and the other one is called portable so the portable would be in a bug out situation so i need to carry everything on my back and go that that's where soda comes SORA stands for Summit on the Air. And again, there'll be linked down. And basically what it is, is that you go on the top of a mountain. It's, it's big in the, in the um, it's bigger in Europe than it is here, but it's starting to pick up uh, here as well. So you go on the top of a mountain and you have to be totally uh, independent. So, I mean, you carry everything. Uh, you cannot carry like a generator or anything like that. So it's a good practice to do that. You go on the top of a mountain, then you push push the button on your, your gear and you try to communicate. So first, it makes you practice your gear. Second, buying the gear for that means that it has to be portables and everything, which fits great in a, um, in a bug out bag. And you're practicing your skills in different situations in in, uh, in the outdoor on the top of a mountain and so then you can understand propagations and all that stuff and by hiking that means you're also getting some exercise so you're getting a lot of the skills that we need anyway um, to to do your stuff and all you have to do is add a bag like when, when I go hiking I just add a bag that has some of the radios antennas and things like that and it adds maybe an hour to my hike because by the time you get up, set up a little bit, talk, do your first communication, and it comes down. But otherwise, you know, like it, it's very easy to do. And then the second one, that's more for mobile. It's called radar. Um, and it stands for rapid amateur deployment radio I, I i always miss what radar stands for but there'll be a link down and that one is more mobile because uh and you'll see on the next picture so this is a sort of activation on the left side as you can see from a backpack small radio antennas on the top you goes there makes a few contact and there's also ways of getting points so uh, i think it's four activation for on the summit and then with that you can get the points from the summit and stuff radar is as you can see on the on the right side there it's part of the stuff so you can do it by bike you can do it by bus airplanes walking whatever is you have to do a certain amount of there's certain rules you have to do certain uh, con connection according to what kind of mode of transport you have so for example if you're using the bus you do a company a, a contact somewhere then you retake the bus you go six kilometer and then we do another contact so this is why you have to be mobile and that's why it's called rapid deployment because you put your your antenna up you talk you put everything down you move to location number two again pull it up do a more communication pull down again move and stuff so it's rapid stuff that's great stuff for when you have to bug out but now with your bags but mobilize out I would say so if you bring like everything in your radios and stuff uh, like in your car and, and things like that and this is what I'm, I'm building right now my station will be a radar station so that means that if I have to evacuate my house everything comes with me in the uh, in the stuff and up in the car and where and where and they're gone and all my station radios and stuff is, is portable 
so it, it's actually sorry not pull but it's mobilizing because it's heavier than my portable stuff but it has a little bit more capacity but also but i don't rely on the house a lot of people with ham radio stuff the radios are very expensive very heavy they're great they can again dx great but for self-reliance i think those two ways of practicing makes great um practice and to focus on those two alone makes amazing um skills to get uh for your your gear and to uh, so then when there's a disaster those two skills will come very handy so in conclusion uh when we uh the self reliance versus ham we want to gather information more than transmit so the kit that be built will have those mentality uh, involved looking at regional more than worldwide so that means that in propagation in our antenna system we'll be aiming more towards ground wave antennas and sky and nevis antennas more than those big very ch chunky expensive antenna that can propagate pretty much around the world if you have like a thousand watts in inside them but it's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to have something that is portable, that is carried, um, and can communicate around here. Um, want to be mobile, even portable. So that will be a big one in the stuff. And be simple so that we can do repair if we need be, uh, if we if need be. And this is where, like I was saying, the skills of electronic, a lot of the kits that I'm doing now, I'm doing them myself. And so obviously there's mistakes and there's stuff that doesn't work. But then by fixing those mistakes and those uh, error, I'm learning about how my gear is working because a lot of it, I did it myself. And relatively inexpensive for a kit so that we can be redundant. So for example, a lot of the kits now I'm going to be talking about will be probably Raspberry Pi once I master it a little bit or get a better control of it. It's because of this. Uh, Raspberry Pi is $35 and there's a lot of stuff you can do with it that a lot of radios can, can do. And all it needs is the uh, those little cards right over here so that's actually one for uh, a system that I'm going to use and uh, by putting the cards basically it does um, hardware what the hardwire radio would do um, but the beauty with this is that now I can have let's say let's have buy uh, 10 Raspberry Pi well I can have two in my go kit two in my home two in my shack two over there all I need to do is carry those cards so in otherwise i would have to buy 10 radios would become very expensive but now 10 raspberry pi at 35 40 dollars depending which one you buy that's 400 dollars, which is the equivalent of one brand new radios and some of them do what pretty much what a radios do so but all i have to do is bring those cards which i can a lot of those systems are are, are downloadable uh, through the radio uh, through the internet and so on the grid up, I can do tons of little kits like this, have this. And even again, because it's redundant, even if I smash it or lose it or something like this, then I can discard those and go to uh, location number two. And I have another Raspberry Pi that can do exactly the same system. So I learned one system and that can be rep uh, replicated on all the different systems because the, uh, the, uh, the Raspberry is has this advantage the disadvantage of it though is that you need to understand raspberry which is a different way of learning is uh, and so that's that's the part that i'm i'm starting to learn i got the idea the concept but i really am not mastering how it, they're working now and stuff but there's some of them you can even buy all pre uh, prepare and stuff so um like this one that's what it was and this one i forgot what it is for uh Oh yeah, this is for SDR. Um, so there's some system, and you can even find them on the internet. Everything is set up and everything. So um, and the kit that I want to do, that's the purpose. That's what I want to aim for. Have all pre-prepared uh, cards and stuff all set up, all ready to go, and then basically you sell the the kit. You you have like the the Swiss Army um, Raspberry kit. And basically now you just put the cards in your raspberry works a certain way and the short the, sh the 
the um, software does all the work for the Raspberry Pi. You want to do another, uh, you, you take off the card, you find another Raspberry Pi, you put the same card, we'll do the, exactly the same system. There is some component of hardware, but I'm trying to limit it as down, so that way you can go from Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi. Anyway, uh, that was a quick video. Hopefully you guys liked it, and your person, your person liked it, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate, and I'll talk to you soon.